All right, guys, I want to do a quick video on how to fix the threads if you strip the threads out on any bow with an aluminum riser. Uh, bought a used Hoyt Power Max back a few months ago, and I just had to fix up and adjust the arrow rest, and the previous owner had stripped the threads out and just kind of made it happen. So. Here's what you need, uh, in my opinion, you can send the riser off, a lot of companies will do these up for free, but you're going to be down the bow a few weeks and, uh, you know, we, we don't really have to go through that hassle. So this is the kit we're looking for. The threads on the bow, um, standard threads, we're looking at 5 16 by 24 pitch, and this is just a helicoil set. So the set's going to come with the uh, tap over here, comes with the installation tool that helps you thread in. And then these are our little spring certs here, these helicoils. And those will go right in. And then basically all we're going to do, we drill out 21 64ths is the size drill bit you can see right there. And then also that's the tap handle that we're going to use to hold the tap. So we're essentially oversized drilling these holes out, or in my case, just the one hole. And then we tap that hole and then we use these little springs, these bushings that go in there. And they're going to thread in and then our same bolt that we've been using is going to go right in there. 5 16 by 24 and that's going to be the same for all but the sight threads on our bow at this point. So here's the bow. This is my Hoyt Power Max. It's a pretty nice bow. I got a good deal on it. It just needs a little bit of work. So I already went ahead, I, I pre-drilled this. These were stripped out. Um, so, it, you know, real simple. I'm sure if you guys are watching this video, that means you already know how to, you know, use a drill. We came in, I like the drill in from the side that was stripped. There still were a few threads left on the backside. And temporarily, I could have just gotten a longer bolt if I wanted to. And I'm sure it would have worked fine, but I really didn't want to risk getting out in the field and having that thing go on me right at the worst time, which is the only time it ever will go. So and this is our bolt. That's, that's the guy that goes in there again. That's standard across the industry. Um, and this same technique, sorry for the, the video, the same technique can also be used for our stabilizers using the same threads in there as well. Um, but as you can see, obviously these guys are are a bit smaller. But so that's the one you can see there. That bolt's just gonna slide down inside, right? So what we want to do is get out that package. It comes with instructions. It's pretty straightforward. Um, again, if you're even thinking about tackling this, you probably have all the skills you need. So. What I'll do is just pop open the package. Like I say, right here, this card has the instructions set on there. Pretty easy. And it's got a detailed set of what to do on the back there as well. So we're going to get our tap, this guy here. At this point we just want to get the tap set up in the tap handle. Get it in there nice and snug, tighten the tap handle up. And that's that. Alright, so there's our tap. So this guy's going to come right in here. It's self-centering. It's going to want to stay straight and down as long as you got that hole drilled. Uh, the one thing I didn't mention, I know some guys are going to really want to put this thing in a, a drill press, make sure everything's straight up and down. Um, the only advice I have is kind of coming from uh, you know knowing a lot of people in the machine industry. I'm originally a mechanic. Um, we already had a hole, and all we were doing is essentially reaming that hole out. So you can use a hand drill. I mean, be careful, but it's going to self-center. It's going to self-line up as you get in there. When you get through, you know, don't be reaming the, the drill bit up and down and everything. Go through. Now we have nice 
you know, clear hole in there. And now we just need to get those threads put in. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the threads in here. And I'll start the video back up as soon as I'm done with that. Alright, I'll show you real quick how this guy goes in. It's pretty easy. I mean, you want to eyeball it, make sure it looks pretty straight up and down as you're going. But once you get started, it's just going to work its way right in there nice and straight. Uh, as long as your hole's straight, the threads, the tap's going to self-center itself. It's going to go in there nice and straight. Let me just go ahead and turn that guy through there. It's nice and easy. As long as you use that right drill bit, this whole process is pretty smooth. You can see right there, it says helicoil 5 16 24 thread. And then it says right on the piece, use drill 21 64 ths. You can see right there. Oop. Bring that into focus. See, 2164. Of course, made in China, but let's uh, work with what we can get. So, anyways, I'm going to finish this up. I'll show you what it looks like, and then we'll go through what that installation looks like of the, the actual insert itself. Real easy, you guys will see. Alright, guys, so that's what it looks like. We've got it all tapped in now. It's got the right thread pitch. You know, here's our bolt, same pitch. Um, but obviously, when we go to put this bolt in here, you know, we can see it's just going to fall right in, right? So, now we get to do the magic part, and that's actually inserting this helicoil. I just make sure everything's cleaned up around there, and we'll go ahead, let me get the camera set up. There are different lengths of these. Um, the kit just comes with this one standard length. Um, if you want to get really technical on it, you can get the longer one. You can see here by the time we put this in, you know, it's going to go over halfway in. Um, and it does stretch out just a little bit. But the one cool thing you'll see is right here our bolt does thread into this guy, right? So the inside threads here are gonna be in good shape once they're spread out. And you can see on here, right, it's just got a little tang in there. Can you see the little indentation at the 12 o'clock spot? That's actually where this piece here, this cross piece, is gonna snap off when we're totally done putting this in. But all we're gonna do is take out of the box this cool little installation tool they give us. Just this guy right here. And you can see everyone's a different size. And you can see they're 5 16 by 24 helicoil. And that's what that is. So this piece here, that's what's actually going to screw it in. You can see the last thread on there. That guy is going to pick up on this guy as we go to put him in. See that? And that's how it's going to screw in. So what this tool does is it actually takes and starts compressing it down so we just set that in there right we've got that little tool piece that we're talking about that's on the bottom side we stick our tool in down through here just like that we're locked in we're ready to go so at this point we get everything set up and just start turning this through. As we turn this through, see how it's just starting to pop out the bottom there? That's what we're looking for. We're just looking for a couple of threads to get started so we have something to start with. Just turning this by hand doesn't really take anything too special. Um, and that's what we end up with right there. And then we get that, we set it right on top. We're going to screw this in just like we would screw in any bolt or fixture. Um, the one thing that we do want to do, they give us this piece up on the top, we can use a wrench, we can use uh, you know our existing tap to go right on top of that and just screw on for us. So I'm just going to pull it out real quick and uh, 
go ahead and get that on there so that we can turn it a little bit easier. Thread this guy on here, and away we go. And we're just gonna turn it right in. It's gonna more or less self-center itself. Again, the tool we're just leaving on there so that there's uh, tension on that spring, so that it can start to push itself in. So now you can see out of the tool at this point but <clears throat> what we're gonna do is go down about a quarter to a half a turn below the top of our riser here so that it's just below flush okay so we're gonna turn that guy down you can see it's just following itself right in there I like to go nice and slow we're not in any hurry for any of this okay it's down there about a half a turn below the surface. And that's it. All we do now is just screw our little tool back out of the threads because it's got the same pitch of the bolt that we're putting in. And that's it. We've just installed a stainless steel thread insert into our aluminum riser bow. And in my opinion, this is going to be the best fix we possibly can do. Um, these are built to to fix and do a lot of things. When we put together high performance engines with aluminum heads, we actually put these stainless steel inserts in there so that we don't pull bolts out of aluminum heads on a performance motor. So they're designed to hold up. They're designed to do exactly what we just did. In my opinion, I have uh, no idea why manufacturers are not doing this right from the factory other than cost. Um, you know, I've heard the argument of weight savings, but obviously that's that's negligible. Um, they could put two extra or two less threads on the bolt and we'd, we'd have the same. So the only thing we're going to do left now, of course we can see down in there, there's that little tab. All we have to do is get a um, basically any sort of flat ended punch and we just give it a quick tap and that's going to pop right off there because again we saw that little perforation so that it would break off. And that's it. Stainless steel thread insert. We've just fixed our bow, and it took me, even with the video, about 10 minutes. It really only takes a couple minutes when you get home. You can see, once we've got this all done, our original bolt is going to thread right in there nice, just like that. As hard, as strong as it ever was, more so even, because now we're, we're steel on steel, and those inserts again are stainless steel we're not going to have any corrosion issues inside there um, other than any inherent corrosion issues we already have with aluminum now the only thing i do want to warn you on is if you have a a um, carbon fiber riser those have inserts in them already we can't drill those out the way we just did here for the most part those are going back to the factory or we're doing a different type of thread repair um, some of the liquid epoxy or liquid steel thread repairs in my opinion none of those are are really great um, so but on your aluminum riser is a great way to get it done I know a lot of shops that do this um, if your shop has this kit in stock they're gonna do it for you really cheap and as you can see I used one it comes with I think 10 of these pieces and the tools are lifetime tools. They're not going anywhere. So you're going to be able to help your buddies. You get a lot of six packs of beer out of it. And hopefully this has helped. Take care.